Right, if we want to quickly and kind of dynamically uh, color code our data to give a visual impression of what it's like, uh, we might use something like conditional formatting. Uh, we have data bars, color scales, highlighting cells, and so on, really useful. Unfortunately, those aren't available in graphs and charts. Uh, kind of frustrating, but well, there we are. It's not really designed for that kind of thing. Uh, so we can hack around it. So I've got one here where the highest number here is 80, the lowest number is 16, and they're highlighted in green and red, respectively. So if I make a quick edit to this sheet, uh, It'll refresh and the numbers have changed. These numbers are just being generated by a random function. Here, the third one, 91, is highest and the lowest one is 15. The second one, make another change. It changes one more time. 24 is now the lowest one. So this is picking up what is the highest, what is the lowest, and it's coloring the bar uh, appropriately. Maybe there's some use for this. Uh, as an accessibility note, don't rely only on coloring for highlighting these kind of things. You want to do it through multiple modes. So what I've done is put a, the rank order on a sort of data bar here. Uh, it's just basically a data label. So let's open up a new sheet and uh, try to replicate this kind of thing. Oops, they zoomed in a bit too far there. So I'm just going to put in some random-ish numbers. I'm not going to I'm not going to put it in with the rand function, otherwise every time we update the cell and this will just refresh and that will get really annoying for the example. So I'm just going to leave these as numbers that don't mean anything, I've uh, set it uh, myself there. I'm just going to label that column value. I'm just going to set cell style to the heading here so that you know, we can tell that it's the value. So ideally, when we insert the uh, bar chart here, I want uh, number five, the fifth value should be red, the fourth value, that being the highest, should be uh, green, but we can't do that, there's no conditional formatting natively. So what we're going to do to solve this is we're going to find the smallest value, we're going to find you know, the main block of the data that isn't smallest or largest, and then also the largest. So if I find what my smallest value is, Oh, it's 123. My highest value is 764. That looks about right. Six, seven, seven, one, six, five, four, six, six, two, three, four. Right, so now if I highlight all of these and insert my bar graph, well, I've got two options. I can either stack them side by side or uh, clustering them together or stack them on top of each other. Now, what's happened here is because some of these data series are blank, we're not really stacking anything up. So if I put 100 there and 100 there, you can see they've appeared above and below it, but that needs to be blank. So because it's blank, what we've got uh, is the highest number is colored in one thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that to green because that's what I wanted. And my lowest one, I'm gonna set that to be red. Doesn't matter, pick, pick reasonable colors, uh, this just traffic like like colors uh, and the rest of it is that orange in the middle so what we've got is something that looks like that move across a little bit um, but we need a way of filling this in dynamically so this is the result that we want uh, how are we going to code that up so what I'm going to start with is putting in a rank and for this we want the rank function uh, not rank average rank dot eq is what we want. Uh, average will start uh, averaging numbers and you'll get a rank of 2.5 or something. But here we go, rank. It's just basically the difference between them is what happens if there's a tie. So we want a rank and we want to rank all of these numbers according to the reference, which is the same set of numbers. So in reality, most of those um, tend to be the same number that I put. And we respond, uh, when we return that, it's gonna spill down and what we find is that uh, rank number one, the highest one here, 764, rank number six, the lowest one is 123. I can also change that from order to ascending and it swaps it around so that the lowest one is now one. All you need to do is be aware of which way around you put it. So how am I gonna detect what the smallest number is? So if I delete this column, I'm going to t use an if statement and I'm gonna test if the rank, 
and I'm going to put a hash just to select all of our ranks, and so it's going to spill down and test all of them. If it is equal to the maximum value, so that again, F2 with the hash of the dynamic range. So now, if this number is equal to the highest one, so I'm going to find the highest one is 6, so it, hopefully at number 6, this will trigger is true, uh, I'm going to return the value. Insert that as a range, and it should pick up the right one. And if it's false, I'm going to leave it completely blank. And there we go. That works. When I've uh, that's blank, 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 blank. 123. Perfect. So I'm now just going to copy that and put it into uh, the largest column. And instead of max here, I'm going to swap that for min. But otherwise, it's completely the same. And I'm going to spill pump uh, error because I've got that 764 for each item first. So if I delete that spills down correctly. So the question is now, how are we going to uh, get this one? Because there are two things that I need to now do. Uh, I want to make sure that this is not the minimum nor the maximum. So I'm going to start with an if statement and I'm going to do if, well, if my rank, press the hash there, uh, is different to uh, the max to hash. Now I want that to be and uh, if it's different to the min. So I'm just going to free type that in there just to know. So I want both of these statements to be true. So we can, if we want, wrap that in and function, put my little comma here, uh, but it's not really going to properly uh, work. Oops, well, it doesn't really work at all. Um, and that's because, well, these dynamic ranges don't play well with the AND and OR logical functions, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do is just make sure I've got these wrapped in some brackets so that they are definitely with each other. And I'm going to put a multiply in between. So if this is evaluated as a true or false, it also evaluates as a 0 or a 1. Uh, and that will be 0 or 1. So if they are both true, they're both 1 they'll come to one because I've multiplied them. That's a nice way of getting around that particular problem. I don't know whether it's a, a feature or a bug that the, the ands and ors don't work nicely with dynamic ranges, but there is a workaround at least. So my value is true. Well, I'm going to return the values if false blanket. And lo and behold, we've got that. That works. Uh, we've got these numbers being copied across where both of our statements are true. They're different to the max and the min value. And that is pretty much it. That is how we are going to dynamically create uh, a graph. So let me just change some numbers here. Well, if this was 55, we can see it updates. That's now the lowest ranked one. It's going to be turned red there. It's appearing in the smallest column. If this one is now maybe 1,000, it's going to appear in the largest column. It's going to appear here green. So we can always uh, add more things to it. I suppose the last thing to cover is uh, what do I do for these data labels here, because these are not quite uh, data labels. I'll show you, if you add data labels to this, I'll just add my data labels, you can see you get numbers uh, that are a bit all over the place and you kind of have to uh, maybe delete them or hack around with them and stuff. So what I did for that is I created a new column and I just put it, let's just say, um, what we'll do is I'll do 0 0.1 times uh, the maximum value, right? So, so what I had was uh, that, I'll just have a lock that reference off for a second. So everything is like 100. And what I added was I added this as another data series. So, uh, I'll add these as labels, the values were 100. Uh, and the reason that I did this um, should become obvious if you say change that, you want this to be about 10%, you want to move to about a tenth of the way up. And then I went to chart design and changed the chart type to a combo. These are really powerful for uh, hacking things together. Uh, so instead of well, the largest, I want that to be the um, stacked column. I want these to all be stacked columns. Don't know why it always changes it, but those are all the stacked columns as normal. And then I want this to be uh, a scatter. 
So what I've now got are basically data points with some data labels on. I want to format those data labels to contain just a value from the cells, which are my values. So now I've got these numbers here, or I can change it and select range it, put it as, as the rank. So that's what that is there. And what I also did, if I go insert um, my illustration icons, this always takes a while to upload if I'm not sure enough. If I look up maybe chart or some kind of thing like this, so I did that. Um, made that really small, change the graphics fill to white, control X that, and then managed to select the, the data points. Hang on, whoops. Select the data points and paste that in uh, and you get an icon to go with it that you can put next to it. Um, so that requires a little bit of faffing around with where you want to put the dot or uh, I think it was some creative cropping and uncropping to set offset it to the side that I did there. Um, but that's mostly just messing around and faffing more than anything that actually involves learning a new skill. So I'll uh, leave that one there. You can also delete this, it's kind of getting in the way because I haven't put the effort into it. Um, and if I just change the numbers, you can see the data will just dynamically update, just like a conditionally formatted uh, table, but now as a chart object.